Alrighty guys, this is going to be a video of my elevator park collection. And yes, this is my voice because this is the first time I'm talking in one of my videos. So, hello I guess. <laughs> Alright, let's start from the top shelf. I'll get to the top top later. This here is a Dover VR lantern that I got off of eBay. And it's not wired up to anything, but I kind of scraped the bell just so I can ring it manually. But yeah, it's pretty cool. This here is an Epco sample that Epco gave me. It has some of their newer buttons. And I suspect that this four button up here is actually the newer button that Schindler is using in their 5500s and stuff because it looks the exact same and it kind of presses the exact same and it just, I don't know, it gave me that vibe. Here's that Epco sample lit up. Let me plug it in. I had to use the extension cord because I didn't really want to take it off. But here's what the one looks like. The two, the three, and the four. I don't know these mo model names for these buttons, but I still suspect that the four is the newer Schindler VR buttons. So just, it sounds like that and it feels like that to me. But I'll let you be the judge on that. It's not mad. I know for sure it's not mad that they're using. Next we have some mugs from local elevator company, All City Elevator Inc. Kone water bottle, Kone hard hat. Kind of a um, drawstring backpack. Here I've got like letter from Otis, innovation catalog. Um, local nine elevator constructors. They're like the local like, union who makes elevators here. And then here we have a very interesting Kone paperweight, which I don't use because I think it's really cool. Sorry for the shakes. I'm doing this one-handed. And back behind there we have a Kone frisbee, which is really hard to see. Let's see. If I'm... There you go. Moving down. This here is a Montgomery Kone belt buckle that um, Kone gave me from St. Paul, I believe. It's very cool. I keep it on my display. It was brand new, so just open and it sits here. This here is an Innovation Decorator sale sample that I got from Innovation. After many requests, I actually got one. I asked for silver, but they made it out of brass, and it's pretty cool. This here is an Innovation Universal sale sample, from also from Innovation. They both light up yellow, because I like the yellow. And yeah. This here was like one of the first parts I ever got. This is an Innovation Delta, Innovation Kone Delta button. Can't wire it up because it has the pin prongs and it's 24 volts. I don't know, maybe one day I'll get to do something cool. This here is a ThyssenKrupp hard hat keychain that lights up. So I can like press the bottom and it lights up. Pretty cool. This here is a little Minnesota pin for welcome and elevator constructors. This here is a elevator pin. I, I think that I forgot where I got that. Uh, an el freight elevator sign from what was that? All City Elevator Inc. They gave me a lot of just random stuff. A stop switch from All City Elevator Inc. This was just in a box with all that the other stuff from All City. Got some various footballs, Schindler playing cards from Schindler. These Kone, this Kone stuff was from Kone. Kone escalator back there. Here I got some like pens from Otis. So if you do this, and then it's like a little elevator going up and down. It's pretty cool. Got Mitsubishi. Oops. Put that back. Not going to stay in there. Right Kone thing with like highlighters and pens and stuff like that. And a Kone keychain. And here we have a squishy Otis van that Otis gave me, because they don't give up parts anymore, so I sent that. This is cool. I don't know why it's not standing down. There we go. Here we have the Dover traditional bell that came from that Dover VR lantern, and when you ring it, it just sounds like a Dover bell. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot up here, this is a drop key I got on eBay. It came with some elevator keys I had bought. This little set, which is cool. And these are a pair of um, crow keys from All City Elevator. And it, I don't know if people call them that. It's like, keeps your glasses on and like the, the water and stuff so they don't fall off. Just cool. This is a Adams replacement um, Otis Lexan slash touch button that I got on eBay. For, like pretty cheap. The two is totally appropriate for it because it's the second part I wired up, which is pretty cool. Lights up white, and I like it a lot. This here is the first part I ever wired. This is a Adam Survivor Plus button 
that came from the Warren E. Burger Federal Building in St. Paul, Minnesota, that Tony gave me when they were modding them. Fortunately, it's missing a part, so this loves to fall off, but it still works. It's pretty cool. I had it originally wired up green, but I didn't like it that much anymore, so now it's a warm white. Moving on here, this is a, I think, a GAL stop switch. That looks like GAL to me. And just pulls out, pushes in like normally. I'm not going to do it on camera. But that was from All City Elevator. Now moving down, this is what I kind of call my main shelf. First off, here are all my elevator keys. I have probably too many elevator keys, but I don't really care. I don't use them that much. They just sit here. Here we have an intermediate Schindler MT call station that I got on eBay. Very cool. I love pressing this. This is very interesting. I got this on eBay a while back. And if you notice up here, there's a switch. This isn't your typical button. The user I bought this from said this was a quote unquote joke button. And it really is. So, first, it's interesting because it was custom made by ThyssenKrupp and supposedly used at the win in Las Vegas. But then, if you flip the switch, both buttons turn on. And it's interesting to note, this is a Mad BS California button, and this is a Mad BP Moon button, which I find interesting how there's two different buttons on one panel. And then, the cool part is, when you press either button on or off the lights, it makes noise. You can't go wrong with that. It's really cool. On, off, so it still does it. I had to buy a proprietary screwdriver because I didn't realize it had proprietary screws. But yeah, I eventually got it to work. Here we have two Westinghouse AE buttons. This one is different than the other. This one's like more touch sensitive in a way. And this one kind of presses if you listen. This one likes to press, but it likes to move. I don't know why these won't light up when like they're pressed, but they will light up when a nine volt's connected. Here are my Westinghouse AE buttons lit up. So this one's a touch sensitive one. To me, it's like more touch sensitive than this one that presses. I think these might be Adams replacements because that's a common Adams font. And the up one does not light up because I broke the socket and I actually switched these two around. So maybe one day I'll get into fixing those, but yeah, these are cool. Pain in the butt to wire though. They, like, they love to be very finicky. So there's that. Here is another Schindler MT button that I got from eBay. This is the terminal version with the fire service key switch, which I wired up. So you can also, another little cool feature with the Schindler MT terminal with the fire switch, this key decides to go in, there we go. If you turn it to the on position, it lights up. And you can still press it. If you turn it off and then to bypass, it also lights up. It's so really annoying with all these keys, but it's still very cool. And this just uses the standard AS100 key. And then when it's off, you can just press it. This was from Kone headquarters at Kone USA in Moline, Illinois. You would think this is Innovation Universal, but it's actually Montgomery. It says under these circuit boards, Montgomery. And before you um, leave comments saying, oh, fix this arrow, I messed, I took one apart to see what it looked like and they're pain in the butt to actually rebuild. So I kind of like it that way, I just got used to it. Anyways, moving down, here we have US Circle button from eBay. This thing is very cool, except I had a lot of trouble with it. So when I got it, this was like the third part I had gotten. And I wasn't really used to wiring elevator parts yet. Excuse the shakes, please. And first, the switches were like really old and stuff. And so I tried to get a new MB bulb, because that's what I saw was in there. But it was 120 volts, so like it barely worked. And then I ended up breaking the up switch, and the down only barely worked. Then I got some new light bulbs. These 9 volts, which work great. But then, I was trying to like butcher the, the down switch to put in the up switch to make it work. And I broke them both. So then I had to order new switches off eBay and ended up rewiring re the whole thing separately as two separate buttons. But now it works great. Yeah. Here we have the weird Dover traditional that everyone has with the weird arrow fonts. This one's cool. Moving over some more, we got another Dover with white rings, which I've never seen before. This down contact used to be broken until today when I noticed that it was just bent. It would just stay constantly lit. So that's pretty cool. I apologize for the shakes. Here we have Schindler um, FIGS 100 slash Lini 100 call station. 
This was from Schindler. It has the white um, background, which isn't as, which it, excuse me, is more common than the black one, which I've seen some other people have. This was also from Kone headquarters. This is a Kone KSS 300 call station, which I realized because KSS 300 has the little oval shaped plate instead of the more rectangle one. This here is a terminal Schindler MT call station, again from eBay, from the same set as the other two. I had a fourth one that was an also intermediate, but I ended up giving that one to Justin, Jalivator 3219, because I decided to. Down here we have a ThyssenKrupp Dover access switch that I got on eBay a long time ago. Back to this Dover ThyssenKrupp access switch, you take the 1846 key, you can just put it in and turn it, it doesn't do anything. Sorry, it's really annoying to see all these keys, but it goes down, off, up, off, down, off, up. It's cool, I don't play with it that much, and it loves to fall over. So that's kind of why I put the stop switch in right in front of it to kind of hold it in place. Here we have a run stop switch from All City Elevator, which is very interesting. It's just like a light switch, but still cool. Here's the Mad BS elevator button that everyone has, Mad BS Classic. This is from the Tissacrup Safety Ambassador Club. I got that a while back. Here's Otis Lexan. I've heard this is old, older Otis Lexan. I had it originally wired up to LEDs, but I wanted it in cans because it looked a lot better. It's very cool. I love pressing this thing. I press it very often. This is from my birthday. Here we have GAL Jet Plus Terminal. This thing loves to not work. It's like very finicky. I have to like, there you go. It actually worked, but I have to play with it a lot, which is annoying but fun. Here we have a Otis car top station from the Warren E. Burger Federal Building in St. Paul. This was from Kone. Those elevators were either Hodden or Otis. Well, actually, they were Hodden, then I think Otis modded them, then they got the Adams mod, and now they're Kone. So yeah, this is cool, you can press these. And another thing from Local 9 Elevator Constructors. And then down here, I, I don't I keep my dumbbells there, I don't know why. Got my supplies bin, which is like batteries, lights, all stuff like that. Extra parts below it. Like, let's just say, um, God, I don't know. The Westinghouse, I took off in a lamp or something. I, I never throw anything out. So that's in that bin. As you see, it's kind of squished. Here's just an extra bin of storage and stuff. And this is a Kone um, key switch that Kone gave me. Or maybe it was All City. I don't honestly remember. But for the longest time, I didn't, I never knew what key it had, so I actually looked on the back of it and it said FEOK1, which I happen to have in my ridiculous key switch set, key set. And so I did that and it works. And then below that is just a random solid plate that isn't really that special. Moving to the side of the shelf here, we have an elevator sign I got on Amazon, really cheap. Here are, is an Otis ad that I got on eBay for their touch stuff, very cool. Below that, the creepiest elevator ad you might see. It's Westinghouse with a guy staring at you, which I find very interesting. Here, we have PTL Centurion. I got on eBay for really cheap, and I actually hung it into my wall, which is really cool. When you press up, not only does up light up, but this lights up as well. They both, it just used to be wired up where you press this, this would stay lit, and this, but I didn't like that that much anymore, so I wired it up where you Press both and the little arrow lights up, which is very cool. I like this. Now moving on to the other shelf. Here we have just some ads, Local 9, Otis, Mitsubishi, All City, things like that. Here we have a monitor button sample. It says Series AY, but I don't know if that's actually the name. Pretty cool. I, this was originally on wall, like plugged into the wall, but I made it battery powered because I like that better. Here we have Adams Decorator slash Epco WN. And it used to, I got it just as the button from eBay, so I had to order a base, but it looks good and green, I like it. Here we have ERM something, I have no idea what it's called. That's up white, I kind of broke off the circuit board to slam an LED in there and it works good. Here we have Vandalic, very cheap. These are usually ridiculously overpriced, but I got like a $10 deal on eBay. So that was good, so I'm probably getting it and wiring up. Here we have like an Otis Luxury button I got on eBay for really cheap. Pretty cool, can't wire it though. Behind here we got some CJ Anderson stickers. An, Ot an actual Otis globe on the left from an elevator and these two are magnets that look like Otis globes. They always love to fall over. 
Moving down, I got some more of my rarer parts. This is a Armor VR call station from Justin. So huge thank you to Justin for this. I love this thing. Wired it up. It's from the Doco parking garage in San Sacramento, California. This here is a hot and triangle bun I somehow found on Etsy while searching for a Montgomery elevator bun, ironically. Very cool. It was just a pain in the butt to wire up because it used to be plugged into the wall and had like 120 volt lamps. And so I had to change the lamps, but it was like, you can't flip the button over or like it'll break. So you had to like hold the board down and like screw it on with a nut. It was a pain in the butt. But in the end, it looks very good. The up contact is kind of broken, so it's kind of like wedged with the plate. So the down one's easier to press, but you can kind of like get it to both work, and it's very cool. Here we have an Adam's Home call station I got on eBay. You can see it says call and car here. When you press it, and once the light up, there we go. The car here lights up white, and the call lights up green, and it actually says in use, if you can see that. It's very cool. Press that off. And here, this is another rare part I have. I got an ABC elevator button on eBay for um, Christmas, and it's very cool. Justin helped me wire this up, so thank you again, Justin. Very rare. Glad to have one of these. The only pers other person now that has one is Andrew. That's yeah, very cool. Moving down, we got a few bells and stuff. This is just a switch I was going to use for you know, something you'll see in a minute that I never ended up using. This lantern was from Justin. Thank you again, Justin. This came from the Sutter Stockton garage in San Francisco, along with this Otis bell. The bell, the solenoid doesn't work, so I just ring it manually. And this is a Westinghouse low pitch dinner bell that I absolutely love. This came from the Doco garage as well. So epic. Yeah. And then, moving down, just have some t-shirts and stuff. Catalog from CJ Anderson. A mug from Mitsubishi and other stuff like that. This, though, is a prototype lantern monitor gave me. That's very cool that I... Probably not going to be able to wire up for a long time because it's like 144 volts. But it's very cool to have. Then moving down again, we have my toolbox where I keep all my tools. Pretty self-explanatory. And then over here on this shelf, we have another Westinghouse ad. Which is interesting. Got that on eBay. Now that's the main part, but now there's a few other things I want to show you. Up here, it's like my biggest part. I have a Westinghouse indicator from Justin. This yet again came from the Doco garage. Huge thanks to him because not only did he give it to me, but you see this Adam Survivor Plus call station on the side? Got this on eBay a while back. Used to just light up green and blue. But now, he helped me wire it up. It was a pain in the butt. See all those wires. And when you press up, up lights up. I'm trying not to drop my phone. And when you press down, you guessed it, down lights up. And you can do both at once, which is very cool. I love this thing. Thank you again, Justin. In addition to the Westinghouse syndicator from Justin, remember that plug I mentioned from that monitor button earlier? Well, I reused it because I wanted to make it where, where you press the button, it would light up and ring the bell. And you needed like 24 volts, which that plug output, which was really perfect. So I have to run a long extension cord, but when you do it and you press up, up rings. And when you press down, down rings. And it's freaking awesome. Sorry for the shakes. This is really hard one handed for me. And so I have two dinner bells from the garage. I asked him if I could have two so I could ring one manually. And he gave me two. So thank you, Justin. This is very cool. Fortunately, I don't keep it plugged in all the time just because it's very hard to like move around with that plug without tripping. But yeah, it's very, very cool. Thank you, Justin. Finally, we have this really cool... What I think is Westinghouse, but I've heard armor, indicator. It's attached to a box, and on top, you can see there's different switches. Inspection, independent service, light, uh, bottom, I don't know what that means, electric eyes, fan. This could be the pit light, actually, but when you turn a switch, it lights up the floor when it's plugged in. It's really cool. I got this um, when Kone was modding the elevators at the Warren E. Burger Federal Building. I don't think this was from there. 
but you never know. Actually, it's not, because that place was seven floors. I can do B, two, three, four, five. Then this one goes two ways. Turn to the right, up and one, and then this car up will light up. If you go the other way, down lights up. But it's very cool. This is very, very cool. Let's see what it looks like, just without the down. So yeah, that is pretty much my park collection. Thank you to everybody who's donated. I will just do a quick pan. I'm not giving out any of these parts. Do not, do not ask, or I will just block you. Thank you so much for watching. Skivator out.